Awesome. And now it gets dark. <laughs> natural light. Here we go. So welcome everyone. I can't see. <laughs> welcome to Strollo University. Strollo U was created at the start of the COVID Ooh. pandemic as a way to up both physical and mental activities and classes to help benefit the cystic fibrosis community through the difficult months while society isolated at home. The CFLF expanded this program with a new spring and fall semester this year, adding brand new classes and incorporating more educational and informative classes to the mix. The CFLF would like to thank all the individual supporters and the Strollo U instructors for their participation in making Strollo University a positive resource and experience for people with CF. We hope you enjoyed today's class. <laughs> My name is Annette. Um, I will be conducting the gardening class today. <clears throat> um, by trade, I am a benefits case manager. Um, in my spare time, I design costumes under my label, Miss Perry. I also uh, self-publish books under the name of um, Aurora LLC. I am an adult and a mother with CF, and I practice mixed martial arts, holistic and natural lifestyles, and as part of today's class in my journeys of researching different types of diets and natural ways to deal with some of the exacerbations, the side effects, allergies, things like that. I went plant-based. I'm still on that journey because I do eat fish, but I wanted to expand and dig a little deeper into gardening and growing my own fruits and vegetables as much as possible. Um, I found that in doing so, I have a lot less um, side effects. A, a lot less um, seasonal allergies. I still get dust allergies, but for the most part, it keeps mucus thin for me. And I have a lot less um, problems with digestion. Still have a lot of lung issues I'm working through, but it's all a journey. Um, eating um, more on a raw basis, I find that the GMO foods in the produce aisle with wax and stuff all over it, does me more harm than good, especially when it comes to the GMO foods. Not all are bad, I'm not saying anything against them. It's just that some um, things that I used to eat growing up that may not have been, you know, so overproduced or GMO didn't give me the effects I have now, which are the food allergies. And when I started growing my own, didn't have those issues. When it comes to food with the wax coating, of course, for their protection and to preserve it. But when we have to peel back that wax, that takes away the fiber and some fruits and vegetables that actually what's more beneficial to you than what's behind the fruit, especially when it comes to CF, because you need that fiber to help push things through. <clears throat> um, I grew up in New York, but I spent a lot of summers on farms in the Carolinas with my grandparents. And so I've been working with farming for a long time, with dirt um, and learning that kind of trade. <clears throat> but it wasn't until I became older and I saw the benefits of moving away from all that processed food. So living in an apartment in New York is extremely difficult, but I still try to grow things in pots. Eventually I upgraded to a raised bed, which is just like a big pot. <laughs> you can have it in the ground. I had a, a terrace and I had um, a four by four box, wooden box filled with dirt. And that is in, in a sense a raised bed, it's more, just more than a pot. And with that, I started to really understand the difficulties of transitioning in the city because it's on the terrace. I was on the 12th floor. The wind was just ridiculous. Starting from seed was hard because where I'm positioned, the sun, the wind, all these things were a factor. And I tried starting with the seedlings, starting with something a little more, you know, grown. And it was just one learning experience to the next. Um, I was able to get a few things out of that, but 
all in all, <laughs> pots in the window does work a lot better. <laughs> but in that, um, a lot, a lot of um, things we learn and we grow from. You can only get through experience. So I'm sharing my experiences with you guys today. And one of the first, and I would say the most important thing is making your own farmer's almanac because it really will take you on a more in-depth journey when it comes to what you're growing. And I mean, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, super detailed. For me, because I wanna move to this lifestyle and it's so important for me, my biggest goal is to reduce the amount of medications I take. So that's why I put so much effort into it. And you can just as easily, you know, get your pack of seeds, all of what's on the seed pack, but it, it will help you in the long run to have more understanding of not just the actual plant, but the environment it's in and what you're trying to do with it. So I'm going to share some screens with you guys. I love that you're doing this gardening. I have been, I've been gardening since a kid too and just playing in the dirt and I'm post transplant. So now I can't really play in the dirt. Like, um, here, I'm sitting for the moment. Um, I can't play in the dirt because of all the bacteria and fungus and whatever. Um, but I still do it with like, if I'm planting something, a respirator and then gloves just because um, it's transplant. And then I have a lot of seeds starting right now too. Um, the, the sugar snap peas from, I guess the packets were really old, didn't work for this yard, but I've been trying to, from last year's, save seeds and then plant those. So I've been working on that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually still learning to cultivate those seeds better. That is not easy. <laughs> so I commend you. That is not easy. Just like collecting them, preserving them, and knowing when, like when is the best time to take them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I got some moldy or some mold growing on the Anaheim peppers. I tried to save and I was like, kind of, oh, yeah. so I didn't yeah. use those, but yeah. There. This is my almanac. It's just a regular binder. I put a little heart that says plants and that's kind of how it seems And I literally just started this year. I've been planting for years. This is the first year I've done my own almanac. And Literally, I'm just gonna walk you through the categories that I have in the book. So of course, I'm not talking about pockets. And so I have little pockets. These are my seeds. This year, um, my inventory includes corn, tomatoes, pumpkins, melons, okra, collards, peppers, cucumbers, peas, potatoes, onions, scallions, catnip, parsley, cilantro, sage, oregano, ginger, garlic, lavender and marigolds. Now, from, from my apartment, which was years ago, I moved into a bigger space. So I have a little outdoor dirt to work with and I am taking 120% advantage of it. Every little piece, like we don't need grass, I need food. <laughs> so in, in my inventory, when I went to, besides, you know, what my favorites are, what I found easiest to grow. I also had to consider my neighborhood. So wherever you're planting, you need to think about not only the weather, which I'll talk about later. You got to think about the pests, the neighborhood bullies, which I call squirrels, um, cats, <laughs> things like that. So some of the things I plant, which um, fell into the herb category and the marigolds, um, deter some of those pests as well as aphids, which are a big um, eater of a lot of the leafy greens. So those are all things you wanna think about when you start your planting. When, as soon as you buy your seed, where they're going, what possible things can you know, hurt them in their production, in their, in their start before they even come out of the seed because there are certain things in the dirt also that you might think your seed is delicious and you know, it'll never grow because it ain't. So you have to think about what's in your soil, um, bug wise, what your soil is made of. I have mostly clay soil. So I have to think about only certain things will grow in that kind of soil. And if I choose to add another type of dirt, how much do I need to add? And how long will I be able to use this space 
before I need to be fertilized or lay new, new dirt. <clears throat> so the next um, thing is to know whether the seed you're buying are perennial or annual. And that really determines, of course, whether it's gonna come back or not, if you have to replant it. Also, how much work you wanna put in? Because if you wanna kind of set it and forget it, I would go with the perennial. That'll be my um, plan for next year. This year, I just really wanted to just use every inch of dirt I could find. So I just threw everything out there and I just wanna see what works for me. Cause it took me a long time to even come up with this list and it's a lot of trial and error. So with the <clears throat> perennials, some of my favorites are the collards. They're extremely hardy for my climate. They come back, they grow pretty quickly. I mean, aside from aphids, it's like the easiest thing to grow. And I didn't have to dig them up for the winter. They survived the New York snow, the multiple snowstorms we had, still got collard greens outside. <clears throat> I did pull some in for the winter just to start, because I also started this um, late last year. I ate through the winter and I had to go in the snow and dig them out. I ate through the winter on those collard greens. They, um, and I mean, I have to really give it up to the collard greens because the, I'll tell you about the hydro gardening later, but the pH issues and fertilizing, all of that, it really, it's a tough plant because I am terrible at this chemical balancing. It's all new to me. I'll get it eventually, but it does, when you're working with hydro gardening, you have to really think about um, the fertilizing chemicals you're using, pH balance, your natural water for where you are, how hard and soft it is, what that pH is like. When you're mixing things, if you're putting other plants, other grow mediums, it gets crazy. Right now. <laughs> so on to um, the next point, your planting calendar. So your planting calendar, you could find on the back of your seed pack, most of the time, you'll have something just like this with the zones that your uh, state will fall in. And that will help you determine when is the best time to plant. And following that, you pretty much plan out, you know, am I gonna start indoors or outdoors at this particular time so that I can go outdoors or be put in the sun by this particular time? Because some plants, can be started right out, even if it's in a window, in the sun, because it's too strong to kill them. So you want to know and have a good idea of just when is the best time and the where is depending on where you are. The where is also, like I just said, whether it's indoors or outdoors. That's another major thing to consider. Also part of your planting calendar and what you could lay out, which would be whatever it is you're growing, and just kind of categorize where it's gonna go and when it's gonna go there. So in this particular one, which I just kind of used this for a guide, in the one I did for myself, all I did was list all my plants on um, one side, like a big column, and then I put indoor start, and then I put outdoor. And all I did was just write the, the month that it needs to be started indoors, if it needs to be started indoors, and the month that it can go outdoors. I didn't do all this extra stuff they have here. I just made it very simple for myself to say, either I'm starting this seed right now in the house, or I can wait until whatever month and just plop it outside. Very simple. When you have um, four seasons, which we do, and you're growing things that really require that kind of time sensitivity. Of course, you want to do a more expanded chart. Um, I decided to just keep it simple for myself. I know from my past experience and growing up in the Carolinas, with, where their climate is mostly warm, um, they plant a specific time of year, which is about now, and they harvest in the fall. And I know just from experience, it's a few months off for me. So I just set my personal calendar, my mental calendar says that all I need to know is when this particular plant needs to be started. And the rest is just, you know, by the book that I, learned, that I knew from growing up, 
We harvest at this time, so we need to go out by that time. Moving on. Journaling. Journaling, journaling, journaling. Always important for yourself and for your plants. And it's just to just take note of what you grew, when you planted it, and what happened. That makes like a huge difference in whether you're gonna do it again next year, whether you wanna do it again at all. Um, <clears throat> my experience with all the, the pests and the gangster uh, squirrels, yeah, I needed to journal all that because then I had to go into learning. And then one thing just takes you to the next. I had to go and learn all about squirrels, all about aphids. Um, it's a journey and in journaling. Because in doing that, you get not only a more appreciation for the reason we have these tests, but for how to work with them. Because me personally, um, I don't like using poisons. I don't use um, weed killers. I'll say any more because I didn't know prior, but all the little things we do even to the pests affect us. So you have to take those things into account. That's why I prefer to this year to grow things that would deter them. And then another part of that is me just being diligent about going and reinforcing. <clears throat> and whether it's using a natural um, kind of spray, which I do for a lot of my plants, I'll mix my own mix of uh, citronella, maybe peppermint uh, and spray my plants. I know in the beginning, I used a mix of that with tea tree. Because tea tree, you know, kills everything. Yeah, it killed my plants. <laughs> I didn't think about that. It's like, that's something you just learn over time. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, um, even with the peppermint thing, because when it came to the peppermint oils and mixing it with other natural oils, it didn't work. So I figured, let me buy these plants. I bought peppermint. And from many different avenues, I'm told peppermint is basically like a weed. It can get out of control really quickly. Um, so you have to keep it potted. So I have peppermint potted in various places in my garden the first year. And then I realized they track different type of bugs, like mosquitoes. No more peppermint. <laughs> I have to find another way. So the effect that the oil has versus the actual plant are very different. So again, a journey and journal it, you'll be able to kind of backtrack reinforce because not only do you now understand what doesn't work, you can kind of correlate that things in this family of plants won't work for you. So in my sewing diagram, which is the next point, making a map. When I said I was putting potting those peppermint throughout, I had to critically think about where things are going. And you have to think strategically when you're talking about planting beneficial plants, planting pest resistant plants. Um, certain things don't mix because they may attract something <clears throat> that doesn't hurt it itself, but the plant next to it, you know, may be affected. So that's something to think about when you have a large space that you're working with. Even if you're in, in, in your home, you need to know, you know, not everything, just like not every person can go in the same group. Okay, um, moving on to the hydro gardening, but before I do that, I wanted to go around if anyone has any questions. There are some questions in the chat. Um, Rema asks, uh, do you have anything good against uh, earwigs? I do not. I have not experienced earwigs so far. What do you have that has earwigs? Soil. soil. Okay. So what I have used that has kept um, those pests down in the past, um, but didn't really harm um, me and my plants for um, putting it's this um, type of fertilizer with sulfur that they don't like. That seems to work and kept a lot of things down. I think it was two boys 
Uh, what do you mean by equal to strong? Oh, sure. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay. Um, I found that uh, milk fats. I've used powdered milk, or um, even whole milk because I don't drink um, whole milk. But I get it from these different um, pantries. I will pour that in my garden because I grow cucumbers and they are susceptible to um, mildew, a mildew type of uh, mold that helped to keep that down. And it also benefited the uh, soil as well. Um, other ways to keep the soil dry, don't have too many off, off the top of my head because I'm in uh, my soil is clay and I try to actually keep it uh, on the moist side, but also very fertilized. It could be, uh, just like you use the hay, uh, trying other fertilizers that are good for your wigs. I could definitely look that up for you and um, get back to you if you like. Um, um, always, always, if you know a farmer, and I'm going, my first go-to is grandpa because he's been gardening on fields for years for um, the city of South Carolina. I mean, both of us are in South Carolina. So um, yeah, he's like my go-to on most things. So yeah, I will get some information and get back to you on that for natural ways. Any other questions? I'll just make a comment. All of this is like new to me. I have the purplest of thumbs. I <laughs> I can barely keep myself alive, let alone plants. So I'm learning a lot. Great job. <laughs> Great, I'm glad. Okay, so we're going into the hydro garden. Is no more questions? I just want to make sure. Anyone? Okay. So um, DIY versus buy. Before I get into that, um, my my experience in hydro gardening, I actually got this setup so that I could pull in my um, crops when the winter was coming because I wanted them to feed me through the winter and possibly be able to put them back outside. And the weather got back to, um, I, not our spring, I would say our summer because the ground is still pretty cold in the New York spring. And I'm sorry, thumbs down. <laughs> I'm gonna be dismantling this and trying to find another way to use it or maybe um, rethink what plants go in it, mainly because of the fertilizing requirements. Um, what I have found out in my research is that most of the fertilizers require some type of um, saline or salt additive, I guess. And when it comes to water and salt, it forms crystals. So over time, the pH was affected for the plant and a lot, there was a lot of um, salt buildup. And even looking at major corporations who do this on a large scale, um, for a lot of the companies on YouTube, they're a lot of boasting and bragging, but that's what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the facilities. These large um, crystalline structures in the background, where to me it just shows lack of maintenance, which is like also me thinking it will be you know, sanitary. And to know that that gets um, thrown out and goes into our water system, which makes our water undrinkable. It's like, Everything is, you know, leading to something else. And if anyone has been paying attention to news in general, uh, when it comes to global warming and things like that, we have a water, drinkable water shortage coming in the very near future. So things like that really bother me. I have, however, have found other ways that you can make your own um, fertilizing medium for these type of units. Um, I'm gonna look into that for next year. But also, the, they have two different types of mediums that you can use to start your root system with hydro gardens, and that's the rocks, the fertilizing rocks, and then they have, this is called rock wool. It's, it kind of feels like cotton. It's made from a, a composite of stones, actually. Something I newly learned, which is really good, 
Um, it doesn't break down, but neither does stones. It can be tossed in the garden, tossed in compost, it won't do anything, but it will um, retain moisture as well. It can be recycled. So you can always um, pick out the plant before you put it in the garden and reuse it. They sell it in various size blocks. You don't need the whole block. I've learned you can cut that sucker into like something this big and I have a very tiny finger and just shove the seed in there. As long as the root has something to coil on and to hold and keep moisture, it will produce. This um, plant here, as a matter of fact, as well as the um, peppermints grew <clears throat> without anything. Like once the root started, it just, you know, took off. It didn't need anything holding it. So it really does depend on the plant as well. Now back to DIY versus buy. Me, I'm buying it. This is way too much work. I looked at the tutorials online, uh, you know, cutting up PVC pipes and drilling holes. I am a girl that likes to get down with some tools, but this one's too much. If you're going to do a tower, if you're going to do something that requires a um, <clears throat> just a basin and you just pop the plant on top, you can definitely do that yourself. That's like one or two plants it can hold. Many, 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 many YouTube tutorials on that. I definitely recommend um, looking that up if, if that's something you choose to do. Do bear in mind that when you are hydro gardening, you are getting less nutrients because you are relying solely on whatever either the medium fertilizer is giving you or the chemical fertilizer is giving you. My greens from this particular garden, they taste very tender and fresh, but they're, they're definitely not, doesn't have that oomph like a dirt grown um, piece of collard green. It's not, it will never be as dark of a green. When a plant is facing the elements, having to deal with changes in the environment, it restructures it itself. You know, it's a little bit stronger, it's a little bit more resilient, and those things come out in the actual produce. So that's another reason why I'm kind of like, eh, when it comes to hydro gardening, depending on what you use. The things that I've seen, like I said, as far as making your own, you're a little more in control of the type of fertilizer that goes into it. But in terms of starting your plant, I would say this is one of the best ways, even if you don't use a fertilizer, because if anyone who has started a seedling, even if you're just using what you can do, being dry beans from your cupboard, dry beans, water, and either something like that rock wool, or just vigorously shaking it periodically. Tons of YouTube um, information on that as well. But yeah, I'm gonna go through all my beans in my cabinet because I do want to grow um, green beans. I have grown bean sprouts, which are uh, very good um, on salad as well. And it doesn't take very long for them to start sprouting. Like regular split peas from the grocery store, shake in a um, container that can drain. We spray it every day, which is something I follow from YouTube. Delicious green sprouts. Um, I grew green peas that same way. And I ate them right from the vine. It was amazing. And can't beat that flavor. I didn't have to cook it. I mean, I of course cleaned it, put some lemon on it, um, make sure there's no bugs or anything, and just, just ate it raw. Because that type of freshness, first of all, you can't get from the store because who knows how long it's been sitting there. But the enzymes um, are stronger at breaking down mucus. It makes a difference when you're eating something that fresh. And coming from farms where we just kind of like pop things off the ground and eat it, they're normal. I was little, I didn't know that. But it, it's a huge difference. And I see why, now as an adult, why when I was younger, I was a lot more healthier, even though I wasn't as active as I am now. The what I was eating made such a big difference. Such a big difference. Um, I went over the grow mediums, which is the next point. But I'll talk about the lighting. I'm gonna, Put the camera up. This is the type of glow light. You guys may not hear me as well for a second. So we have different types of lighting on the glow lights. 
don't know if you can kind of see that it's a um, kind of purplish red. One of the starter functions for a seedling. And then we have the UV. Okay. For something, I find that keeping it on UV is good enough because I'm not growing anything that's directly underneath. So having these that are sideways facing not get any of the ultraviolet lights doesn't help them. I also have a series of aluminum foil and cardboard reflectors. Doesn't have to be um, super expensive or fancy. I have a random um, mirror. Let's see if they're kind of facing sideways. Anything just to give it a little bit more light because I have just, I actually started these about two weeks ago. A few of them are um, newly sprouting, but I really just wanted to get a, a bunch of seedlings started because now it's kind of the time to put a lot of these outside. So I don't want to get them to a, a more mature point. I just want them to just start. This could take them a little further, but because of the issues I mentioned earlier with the pH and everything, each of these plants don't, don't share the same requirement for um, pH, water, salinity, and all that. So I can only push them to a certain point before they start to die. Um, in maintaining those pH levels, I have um, gotten liquid adjusters that helped for that type of fertilizer that this started with, um, as well as just in general, if a plant is sick, you see it not doing what you think it should be doing, you just have to remove it when it comes to something like this because they have vertical towers, I'm sorry, horizontal towers, the vertical tower. And when a plant is ill, everything around it is going to be ill. So you have to remove it. And there's different ways you can save it. Definitely um, talk to an expert, depending on the plant. Um, I found just removing it and sometimes letting it dry out. I've heard even giving it a little dish soap, and rinsing it, waiting, putting it back, things like that. But again, I would say just get rid of it because once the water source is contaminated, everything's affected. That also, that, and that is a part of cleaning because you're cleaning out the material, sick material. Um, again, like I said, with the buildup of the salt crystals on this type of unit with the fertilizer that I use, you have to make sure that you are wiping it down. Um, anytime you see even algae growth because you have a UV light, you're gonna have algae. You have to make sure you attack it and that's just wiping it. You can use chemicals. I don't really find any that I like to use. I have this, which I recently exchanged for a plastic bag. I had a cover on top because it is open. You could stick a plant on it. I just decided not to because ideally a plant would not get direct sunlight <laughs> for hours a day. So I didn't want something that's growing this close to this light, having this excess light and heat for so many hours in a day. So I just cover it up and that prevents uh, a lot of algae buildup and the um, evaporation of the water so fast. Um, this is a basement, it's fairly cold. Um, temperature is also a thing to think about, but more so when the plant is, I would say two, two inches tall or more, because now it's really relying on the warmth to push it to the next stage. But again, starting with seeds, just trying to get a little sprout, take it to the next stage. I'll pop it in, as soon as you see it, take it out and do what you need to. And some more of my, um, oops. some more of my YouTube journeys, um, tissue rolls. A great way to start a plant as well because not only um, do you basically be able to separate it, it holds moisture, especially if you have in like little, you know, 
dessert cup like this. Because it's paper, you can pop the sucker whole thing in the ground once your um, plant starts and it's at the right time and it will degrade and be absorbed in the soil. It won't hurt the soil, it won't hurt the plant. And you can have, I've seen people have like a box full of these, just the same way you would have a plastic planter, but it's all about, you know, reducing that carbon footprint stuff. Put it to the side. Just any other tips and tricks. Um, main, if you're doing hydro gardening, you should always have a, a pH kit. Testing your pH anytime you make a change. <coughs> Excuse me. I check every time I put in the water. The most of these types of units can hold, I would say two weeks. You don't have to water for about two weeks, but you should still check the pH because it can change as you know the water decreases, the amount of the solution that's in it rises and it's more um, potent for the plants that are there. Wait, so check if there's anything else to mention. Oh, that's about it. I, besides the vegetables, I have tried strawberries. Not successful. <laughs> I have found out that they are actually the, one of the hardest to um, not only grow in here, definitely to grow by seed, period. Like I, I got a little bit, but in, in normally what I'm seeing Almost nobody's getting this stuff of my seed, like just popping one off strawberry. Very rare. Um, you get, you might get a plant, but it's not gonna um, fruit. Um, I've, I've even brought plants, strawberry plants from the store, and it had a strawberry. Besides the squirrel snatching them, it died. But I'm, I'm blaming the squirrels because I had it in a perfect place outside, and one by one, it just disappeared. I caught them in the act, but it got away. <laughs> Um, I have um, currently also been exper experimenting with things from the grocery store in terms of herbs. Um, if anyone's familiar with the term pinching, that is just when you just like snapping a piece off of a plant and regrowing it. Another easy thing to do, especially if you just um, feel like you kill everything because it takes so long, all you have to do is put it in a cup of water and leave it alone. It will root. And once the roots get long enough, you can just put it wherever you want it to grow. Um, I would say that's one of the easiest and cheapest ways to start things and to kind of train yourself because it's, it's you already have something, you know what it's going to look like. And now you're just waiting it to root and regrow itself. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? There we go, just trying to unmute. Um, let's see. It's funny that you said, um, what you said about the strawberries, because that's what I brought. And I'm like, oh man, I hope they were. <laughs> I don't have too many squirrels over here because I'm doing it on my balcony. So hopefully, and like it's a pre-brought plant. So it's just mostly the caring part for me that you know I gotta get it together but, uh, <laughs> but yeah I that was very informative like I'll definitely be taking a lot away from that because I really want to try to grow things and I was more for like trying to grow like fruits and vegetables so because flowers I yeah I, I, yeah. <laughs> I only got into flowers because they're supposed to keep those squirrels away and the aphids. <laughs> Only the flowers I pick, which were like um, the marigolds, definitely work for scallions. Don't sleep on a scallion either. Oh my gosh. I planted maybe two because you buy scallions, they give you so much. Who uses all of that? <laughs> I put I put two out, man, those suckers took over. <laughs> and they and they're good. Um, they came back the next year. Um, huge. So yeah. That's another one that shouldn't have too much trouble with. There's a lot of kind of plants I would call just like no nonsense plants, just collard green, scallion, they, they're fine. You can kick them over and they'll, they'll come back. <laughs> yeah, but I'll definitely be uh, 
trying and um yeah i'm definitely gonna need you to like do a series or something because i need help i i have pretty pots but i don't have anything in them because i'm afraid i'm not good at this <laughs> what kind of pot is that just a just a random pot i bought i just like the face i don't even know if i'm gonna use it for potting i just might like, keep it around it has it has a twin it has a but yeah, I, I'm too big on trying to be fancy than actually getting something that would actually work. So my Can I, um, is are those ceramic? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, if you do decide to use them, um, just make sure that you have either a good layer of good rock or something in the bottom to keep it drained, well drained, because mm -hmm. those hold a lot of water and plants in them are um, susceptible to root rot if they don't have holes in the bottom. Okay. Good to know. I will do that. <laughs> yeah, don't beat yourself See, up on those here. strawberries. No, those strawberries not going in there. No. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, don't beat yourself up on them. Man, oh, yeah. that, I, I tear about my strawberries. <laughs> this one strawberries. I know. And I mean, I saw so many tutorials with um, growing them and these type of things also. And people just had huge plumes of strawberries, but um, it didn't work out for me. I have to, I think, well, one of, one of the main things for this in particular was that um, I needed to start something with a very long and healthy root system. Can't just take it from the dirt. And that's what I did. Mm. So I'd have to find a, a breed or someone who already has started it in a hydro garden before I could pop it in there. I can't grow outside, obviously, but I'm, I'm going to try again with this. <laughs> awesome. Hopefully we can like take the journey together. And <laughs> strawberry journey. I mean, yeah, let's strawberries in the fall, indoors. <laughs> I want to eat strawberries through the winter. Yeah, right? Figure it out. Because yeah. that would be awesome. Just grow anything. I don't know, just help, help. And I don't know why it didn't pass down to me. My sister, she's good at growing things. My mom, my grandma, like my grandma, she has strawberries and grapes and all, all different types of stuff in her yard. And I'm like, it's because she's from the South, so she don't count. But like, <laughs> my sister has, what do you have growing? Mm -hmm. I have um, potatoes. She has potatoes. Um, onions. Onions. Green onions. Yeah. What onions? There's like there's like some chives, I think, on the other side. Fancy. Chives, tomatoes. <laughs> it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's nice to be them, I guess. Well, those are plants that you can just set in and forget it. So yeah, strawberries not so much. Yeah, I had that I same issue. I kept picking stuff I really wanted that required a lot of maintenance and work and tedious stuff. No. <laughs> I give up on those. Give me something like this puppy here. Uh, all the stuff I, I chose, that's why I planned it out this year. I'm going to eat well, and I'm, I'm going to stress less. There you go. <laughs> I'll just have to go to the farmer's market and get there freshly grown. <laughs> and I'll just pop up here. Look what I got, guys. I did that. <laughs> Purchased it. Same thing. Came from me, kind of. <laughs> but yeah, this was... Awesome. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? I have many concerns, but that's another day. I... <laughs> yeah.
Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Awesome. I'm also on Facebook as Artist Miss Perry. Uh, that's it. I don't have any other social media. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of social media. <laughs> I don't think I can handle any more counseling yet because Google mm -hmm. is enough. Emails and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, this was great. Uh, thank you for teaching us. You're welcome. And we will all be flooding your emails and Instagram <laughs> with all of our questions, and you're going to block us. And it's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Uh, so, yeah, and I'm hoping to have you back. If not this semester, maybe like towards the end of the semester, definitely next semester. Um, I have some ideas, so I'll run that by you. And uh, we will figure something out because this is great. <laughs> well, if so anyone's interested, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, if anyone interested, um, Sunday, if you're on uh, Facebook, and I'll post it in um, Instagram also. I do um, uh, adult discussion on children's books. Um, if anyone wants to get in on that, I definitely recommend it, even if you're not, not into children's books, just because of the different um, perspectives. Um, and I have to say that there's a lot of healing that goes on in those groups that I do with the children's book reading. Um, there's usually no children there, it's for adults. And <clears throat> feel free to um, share you know, your comments, um, concerns. Um, also open if you have any suggestions on children's books to be discussed in that group. I talk about um, my books as well as other children's books. Awesome. Thank you. Definitely be looking into that. So um, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope everyone uh, is able to grow all the fruits and veggies and send them to me. And everything will be great. <laughs> and uh, we will see you in the next class. Thank you. This is great. Bye, guys. <laughs> Have a good one.